Hi, great season. Thank you so much for, for having us here today. Um, Hi, thank I, you for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I love the show. I was, I was like, went through it all yesterday and it was amazing. It was oh, wow. so great to see the arc of the characters and see everyone and all. Um, so my first question is, the show covers a lot of really sensitive topics and things that are really timely to teenage years and parenting relationships and, you know, from self-harm, body positivity, peer pressure, teen sex. What, I guess, and this question is for both of you, what did you feel was the most important one of those that really needed to be handled and focused on and um, addressed? Um, I don't know that you... I don't know. What do you think? Well, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say that any one of them weighs more because I think to each person going through something like yeah, that, it can heavy. be the center of, of their trauma. But I think the most important response to those mm -hmm. is, uh, at least for Ginny's character, um, and in some ways Marcus's, uh, is seeking help during yeah. that time. I think that's the remedy or that's the step toward yeah. um, a healthy recovery. And, and we see that luckily with Ginny's character and we see for Marcus, we see his parents, you know, he's on his medication again and he has yeah. people that he can lean on. Um, and I can only hope that the other characters who go through, uh, you know, Abby and um, Samantha and, you know, the, the things that they are obviously also hiding, um, you don't know. Yeah if they also have those tools. They all, all of those issues and all of the issues on the show fall under the umbrella of mental health, mm -hmm. which I think is so incredibly important to talk about. And mental health wasn't really discussed on shows that I was watching growing up. So it feels like a privilege to get to be a part of starting these conversations in a more nuanced way. And hopefully people can identify with them and find some relief and catharsis in identifying with it. You guys do fantastic at it. And I think that's a great conversation starter for a lot of relationships. So thank you. Thank you. Amanda, you have the next question. Hi, I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms. So thank you for joining us to chat with us today. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, so my first question is for uh, Antonia. And uh, we just were talking about, you know, Jenny's character and the difficult things she's going through, self-harm and carrying so much guilt on her shoulders and everything. And after the success of the first season, I was just wondering um, how the reception has been from fans who have also been dealing with those kind of struggles. Um, it's been extremely gratifying um, and humbling and fulfilling to know that there are fans who have been so deeply touched by the show, um, whether they reach out to me in my DMs, whether I meet them in person, you know, happenstance. I've had many uh, fans, old, young, like from every demographic. I've had parents come up to me, yeah. um, just so thankful for the stories that we are telling on the show, as much as our show is very entertaining and it's meant to, yeah. you know, put you it's through the like ringer. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it does include these darker themes. It does include some serious uh, material and subject matter that affect so many people. And um, to know that we have executed it in a mm -hmm. way that is responsible um, is is just so so great. And uh, yeah, it, the goal is for people to feel seen and to to get the courage to speak up about um, things that they may need help yeah. with. So yeah, it's very, it's, yeah, it's touching. It is. Thank you. Clarissa, you have the next question. Hi, um, thank you so much for speaking with Queen V Latina today. My first question is, do you think we will see some drastic character development in season two? A hundred percent. For sure. <laughs> There's a lot of fun new dynamics between surprising characters that allows you to see an entirely new side of literally every single character. It's really fun to play and even more fun to watch. Yeah, I think every literally, I think actually literally. every single character you is see a whole new side of is, them. Yeah, is completely yeah, the it's just more development. Even more fleshed surprises. out. Yeah. Yeah. Something you relate to everybody even more than you already did. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Cami, you have the next question. Hi, Brianne. Hi, Tony. I'm Cami from the Mama Diaries.com. So nice to speak with the both of you today. Hi, so thank you. 
huge fan of season one. I watched the series with my mom Aww. and I know, right? So um, when I reviewed season one, that, that post is still, it's one of my most popular ones that has ever been published on my site. It, it was wild. Thank so you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was great. So back to talking about, you know, there's so many themes, there's so many important themes tucked within the show. And I just want to know, how does it feel to be able to use those characters and like tell their stories to deliver such important messages? It feels like, uh, I mean, you've said before, it feels like an immense privilege. Yeah. Um, it's a responsibility that we have. And I feel, I feel so grateful to be on a, on a set and an, on a show yeah. um, with creators who are conscientious of that. Yeah. I know we work alongside Mental Health America whenever we have to touch on the, um, you know, mental health aspects of the show. And so they ensure that we don't over sensationalize things that yeah. we don't, because I think it, it, things can be become glamorized a lot in Hollywood to where it, it's, it's trivial um, to where these very real you know, struggles that people go through become a trend or become, right. you know, and that's not at all the point no. of, of why we include it in our show. And so, um, yeah, it feels like an immense responsibility yeah. that we have to give it to, to do it justice. And yeah. To be respectful. As an actor, it's an honor to get to be a part of something that's art and argument, that it's not just, um, the show is, is not just escapism and it's not just a distraction, which I think are two wonderful things in itself. And, and I watch plenty of things for that exact reason, because life can be so hard, but to also be a part of something that can be a conversation starter for these really nuanced, heavier subjects that weren't on shows that I watched growing up. And it's really exciting. And I think we really, we take it seriously, but also get to have a lot of fun doing it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Donna, you have the next question. Right. So in the narration from Ginny, she talks about claiming her power and the scene where she goes to tell hunters, you, you think she's going to say one thing, but then she says, there's something on your sweater. And it was a great way oh. for her to be able to go and address him. So, and you did that several times. The, the, the character does that repeatedly throughout the season. And I guess my question is, what is, what was your most, uh, your most favorite line? I seen through that as you, as your character matures and starts to really own it amongst this new group of people. I really love the moment where she puts down the smoothie at the end of two, two I think it's the end of yeah. two. Um, cause it's just like, listen, you want to play this game? Yeah. I'll play this I know. game. It ta yeah, yeah. Two, it takes two to tango. Um, that moment was just so fun. And then also the one where she comes in and she, she gives Austin, Austin gets the little game boy. Oh my God. And she just hands Georgia the credit card. She's putting Georgia in her yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that rebellious streak that kind of that Ginny has sometimes that, that can be really fun. It's a nice, it's a nice reprieve, I think it's from fun. all of the sadness and she's yeah. like standing up for herself so it, yeah that's a fun moment yeah you're like go Ginny yeah I'm like yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a lot of scenes like that with both of you cool thanks Amanda you have the next question all right well this one's for Brianne and um I recently learned that you two were actually really close in age something only like eight years apart just about Okay. So <laughs> I was just, yeah, I didn't realize that. And yeah. I was just wondering how difficult it was, you know, taking on this mother role character being so close in age like that. You know, it shockingly didn't really play that much of a part for me. I think I, Tony feels like a sister in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know, we can just relate to each other yeah. in a way that's very specific to a super young mom and a daughter where it just a lot of conversations that might feel uncomfortable or outlandish aren't yeah. because we're kind of already on the same page. We've had a lot of similar experiences um, and I just love and respect her and she's amazing to work with. So it didn't. It made it, it was shockingly easy. And I think if anything, just helped create a really safe space between us. Yeah. And I, Tony, yeah, feels like my love for Tony is the same that I have for my siblings. It's, and I have, I'm the oldest of four, uh, of five. I have four younger mm -hmm. siblings. So I don't know. It felt shockingly normal. Well, you two are great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Clarissa, you have the next question. 
So was there any ad-libbing or improv that happened in season two? And if there was, can you share what it was? I think less so. Less so, but there was one funny moment, but it's not funny because it's such a heavy moment, but oh. we did keep it. <laughs> what? Do you know what I'm thinking of? I'm trying, no. The I... dream sequence right off the top. Yeah. It's like, I, you're my child. I'm your child. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> you're a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, we, during the fight scene in the dream sequence or nightmare sequence, yeah. Like, um, we I had to that. improvise a little bit because the physicality kept going. Yeah. And then Tony was like, you're a child. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're my child. And yeah, like there are, there are some, some moments where we, we throw in uh, a few ad libs, but I think, I think particularly for George's character, everything she says is so specific. Like yeah. it's, it's very, um, it's very curated. Very intentional. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there are some moments I think for Ginny where she plays a little bit with, I know like in, at Blue Farm, um, Ray who plays Joe is such a wonderful yeah. person to work with. And also, um, Rebecca who plays Padma. Um, so we do have some fun in Blue Farm, but yeah. the, the tweet between it's, us, yeah. it's, it's less It's so, few yeah. and far between. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, I think it's due to the fact that your characters are so well-rounded that the script mm -hmm. is probably so important. Um, cause yeah. you guys aren't just straight or you know yeah. it's very circular <laughs> okay yeah. thank you cammy you have the next question so i live in rhode island so i really love all of the new england references especially yeah. the sports teams and stuff so i need to know you had those like vintage fenway seats in your house and then um well you moved them to the to the office and the <laughs> that was very savvy yeah. um were, were yeah. they real probably not but were <laughs> Were they replicas? That's a good question. I do not know the answer to that. I don't know. I just I liked them because they were like old and they were really cool. cool. I had no idea that they were based on something real. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I loved them though. They were super cool. Thank you. <laughs> Donna, you have the next question. So in the last round table, we learned that there was karaoke and other fun things that took place because you guys filmed during COVID. So I was curious if there was anybody that stood out as who kept you all entertained, who was the, the lighthearted one in between takes that had everybody laughing or just kind of at peace between everything. I think Nate. Nate definitely. Nate hosted us a few times. He yeah. Like kept us. Nate keeps it light. Keeps the morale going. Yeah. He's, yeah. And always Diesel. Oh, Diesel. Awesome. I mean, you, I love working with Diesel. It's just He's a riot. A character. He's so precocious and so funny and so smart yeah. and just really witty in the jokes he comes up with. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to keep a straight face. Yeah. That was great. Joke. Yeah. Thank you. Amanda, you have the next question. So as Donna said, we just chatted with uh, Felix and he shared a little blooper of uh, and Anto Antonia falling through the window and doing a I roll. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just was wondering too, if you all wanted to share any bloopers of your own or even little behind the scene fun facts from filming. I mean, they're like always like whether I walk into a door or like yeah. the the whole potato thing, like oh where you have gosh. to drop the potatoes hard, in yeah. the kitchen. So many things have to be orchestrated a certain way. Exactly. Natural movement is always the most unnatural. A hundred percent. And there were always scenes too where Ginny and Marcus are maybe having an, an intimate moment and Georgia just has a quick line, but because of where the camera was, I couldn't actually leave the room. <laughs> so I would also be in the room while they're shooting some of these things. Yeah. <laughs> like in the corner behind just the camera. Just in the corner, like looking at the wall, being like, just pretend I'm not here, you guys. Uh, you have the privacy, do your thing. There was a moment um, between Sarah Ways Glass and I um, when when Max and Ginny have their kind of powwow in the hallway where Sarah, Max goes into a, an imitation of Ginny and she's like, trying to remember that I'm Ginny. And the voice, she was, just everything about it. I, I'm supposed to be angry at her in this scene. And every time I'm, I'm cracking a smile and we had to call cut so many times because she's just, That's she's funny. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Thank you so much. Larissa, you have the next question. If you ladies could play any other character for the day, who would it be and why? Oh, I would play Zion. I was going to say Joe. 
<laughs> I don't know. I love his banter with you guys. He is fun. Yeah. I love that he's got his cafe. He's like um, always stressed. I love though. his character so much. Yeah. He's so funny and so like inadvertently charming. Um, I just want to be a cool motorcycle guy. I mean, that would, I wouldn't even touch it. I could, I could never be that cool. Yeah. It's, he's too cool, Zion. I just want to know what it's like to be 6'5". I guess that's the real. Oh. <laughs> I just want to be able to like <laughs> look down on everyone. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tammy, you have the next question. So when I write my reviews, I normally include like a parent's guide that kind of goes through, you know, like what ages it would be appropriate for. And, you know, Ginny and Georgia has a lot going on. I mean, there's sex, there's language, you know, you could, I could keep going. But I think that this series is incredibly important for parents to watch with their teenagers mm -hmm. because it's so eye-opening and there's just so much going on. So um, what would you guys have for like any takeaways or messages that you're hoping that your audience would walk away from? Hmm. Um, I think, I think although our show does include, you know, topics of sex, uh, language, you know, violence, yeah, traumatic, self -harm. you know, self-harm, yeah. I think it, it does so in a way that isn't gratuitous. Yeah. Um, and so therefore it does it in a way that doesn't distract from the true themes of the show. Right. Um, and you know, these are things that happen in people's lives. These yeah. are things that are very real to our reality, whether you want to shelter yourself or your children yeah. from it or not, those are going to be there. And so, because we aren't so gratuitous yeah. with these elements of our show, I think, um, it's all the more important to watch and, and be able to, uh, you know, engage with your, with your family, with your children, yeah. um, on a level that might not have been reachable without it. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes kids or oftentimes kids are, are very scared to approach their parents about these things that they're yeah. dealing with outside of the home or whatever that well, might you be. You can recognize it in yourself. Like yeah. You see it in someone else and it can be cathartic yeah. and. And so I think it's important to have something to sit down yeah. with and, and experience together to be able to open up those conversations. I hope they take away that vulnerability really is a superpower. I think it's one of the most important things in life. I think as we grow up, we lose a lot of it and, or at least part of like things I work on in therapy is maintaining vulnerability and undoing a lot of the tightness surrounding those things. Um, and I think it's just something everybody can benefit from. Yeah. And it's, it's very hard, but I think it's a beautiful superpower. I love that. Thank you both. Thank All you. Right. Donnie, you have the next question. So I'm going to repeat my question that I asked in the first one because I, I love the answers, but I am curious from each of you, where do you see, what would you like to see of each of your characters going into the next season based on how this season ended? I hope Georgia maintains <laughs> working on her self-awareness and working on some of her social and cultural blind spots. I think it's a really important space for her to live in, but I also love, I love watching and playing Georgia out of her comfort zone. I think it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to see Ginny happy. Yeah. <laughs> I just want her to be happy. Um, and so, you know, She's mended a few relationships, and I think by the end of yeah. this season, we see her in a stronger place than we've seen her previously. I just hope she can maintain, even though we have that huge cliffhanger at the end of the season, um, I hope she can maintain maintain some sort of strength and, yeah. and identity and centeredness. And Ooh, she doesn't have peace. She just needs to find peace. I know. <laughs> or Jenny. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Well, that is all of the time that we have for this roundtable interview. Thank you all for coming. Please say your goodbyes and exit the Zoom room. Bye, guys. Thank, Bye. You. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank nice you. to meet you.